evening, everyone, and welcome to Wapakoneta High School, where tonight the homestanding Redskins welcome in the Elida Bulldogs. Hello, everyone. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Darren Gilbert and our entire WSN crew. And, Gilly, we take a look at both of these clubs, and they seem to be going in opposite directions. Elida's lost five of their last six. Their last win was against Bryant on January 13th. You look at Wapakoneta, they've won six of their last eight, but it still feels like it's anybody's game tonight. It is. It's anybody's game. It's two contrasting styles, but two teams that are very well coached under, you know, Coach Tabler's had veteran leadership uh, under the helm of being a basketball coach, both at Elida and Perry. Coach Elkert, you know, is coming from a rich basketball family with his dad, Scott. Both teams, you know, know how to scout. They got good assistant coaches. One team likes to make it a half-court game uh, in Wapakoneta, where Elida wants to play at 94 feet. So it's going to be an entertaining game tonight. Uh, two contrasting styles, like you said. One team is on a roll at five and six. Uh, five out of last six, winning being Wapakoneta and Elida losing five out of six. But they're still trying to string some pieces together. And this is an important game because you know what? We got the Martin RPI staring down everybody's uh, sights now yes. here coming up in a couple weeks. So it's going to be an important game tonight uh, for those computer points, I guess, as you would say. And uh, let's just roll them all out and let's play tonight. Well, you take a look at what Coach Tabler talked to us pregame, and he talked about defense, rebounding, and tempo. But, Gilly, when you talk about controlling the tempo against – uh, Coach Elkert's teams, that's really tough because they can slow it down. Well, they, and you know, that, that's a great point because I had them against Van Wert, and from the tip off, they just controlled the tempo and they would not let Van Wert get out and run the ball with it. And they did a great job scouting and they knew exactly who to let shoot and, you know, who to take away dribble drive action. So, you know, yeah, it's going to be a chess match tonight and it's going to be a a will of attrition, so to speak, because kids are going to have to make plays that are uncharacteristically on the stat sheet right now, not filling those stats up point-wise. Let's take a look at the starting lineups. For the visitors, the Bulldogs from Elida High School, they come in with a 6-8 and eight overall record, 1-4 and four in the Western Buckeye League, offensively averaging 48.7 a game, and defensively they give up 55.7. They'll start number zero, Zori Island, a sophomore guard at 11.7 a game. Number two, Tori Thomas is a post senior at 5.2 a game. Number 13, Jackson Kovalt is a junior guard at six points a game. Number 22, Bryce Engel is a senior post at 3.4 a game. And rounding out the starting five, number 31, David Etzcorn is a junior guard at 8.2 a game. The Wapakoneta Redskins come in at eight and eight. As we said before, they've won six of their last eight games. They're three and two in the Western Buckeye League. And they'll counter with this lineup. Number three, Zach Niekamp is a junior guard at 12.9 a game. Number five, Nate Metzger is a junior forward at 3.1 a game. Number 14, Jackson Quarter is a 6'5 forward at 10.9 a game. Number 20, Cash Shadel is a 6'1 junior at 7.4. And number 30, Deacon Redder is a 6'7 senior at 3.1 a game. So partner, buckle up. It's gonna be a good one tonight. It's gonna to be a good one. Like I said, it's gonna be two contrasting styles. Got a nice crowd here this evening. As always, you know, when you can come in here and play well on a visitor's court in the Western Buckeye League, every night's going to be a challenge. When we come back, we'll have the starting tip-off for this WBL action right here on WOSN. Welcome back to Wapakoneta High School, where the Redskins host the Elida Bulldogs tonight. Our premier sponsor tonight is John Stocker, DDS. Providing dental care for high school sports fans, Dr. John Stocker is a premier sponsor. Also, Cook & Son Plumbing and Heating. Wapakoneta's premier sponsor is Cook & Son Plumbing and Heating, specializing in old-time service since 1978. Find us on Facebook or call 419-738-8956. Well, Gilly, look, uh, it's uh, it's pretty nasty outside, but uh, this gym's getting full. I, I cannot believe the crowd we've got tonight, and that's no disrespect to either school because they travel well, uh, but it's a big crowd. Uh, basketball season, <laughs> late January, right. you know, just scanning the crowd. And I'm looking up, there's Coach Elkert up there. He's pointing at that. us. Saw that. That's yeah. awesome to see down here watching, you know, he's getting to 
him and his wife get an opportunity to watch their son coach. And Coach Bowersock, I had a pleasure seeing him down at New Bremen. He's here again tonight. Spent many years coaching here at Wapwalk in Spencerville. I'll tell you, Gilly, you, you look at these head coaches. You got Matt Tabler and you've got Elkert on the other side. You talk about intensity on oh, both benches. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you could bottle that intensity, those guys, they get after it. Yeah, they, they don't have a loud voice like me. They can't. They keep the voice in, but man, I'm telling you what, they are as intense as you get. <laughs> so we are ready to get started. Three good officials tonight. Deacon Redder for Wapakoneta will be jumping center, and Bryce Engel will be jumping for the Bulldogs. You know what I noticed pregame, Gilly, is Elida's got a lot of football players, as does Wapakoneta, both, you know, playing two sports. And, you can tell both these teams hit the weight room hard. Uh, yeah, both coaches, well, they coached with one another before Elida's head coach took the job. Kyle uh, Harmon, he was an assistant over here with Travis Moyer, and yeah, they hit the weight room, you can tell. Papaganetta pushes the ball down low. Nice little turnaround jumper. That's number 14, Jackson, excuse me, that's Jackson Quarter for the Redskins. He misses on that shot. Bulldogs bring it down. Try to go baseline, it goes back to Elida. Yeah, Metzger got his hands on it. And you've got a chance to see Zori Island, the sophomore mm -hmm. guard for Elida, and you're really impressed with him, Darren. I really like him. You know, he's one of those kids that if he learns to just keep his composure, uh, he's he's going to get better and better. He played last year as a freshman, and this year, you know, he's still making some mistakes, but you know what? He, he's getting better, and I really like the Wash kid. Uh, the night that I had him, they just uh, they did what they wanted to do to Perry the first half and, and just took Perry out of anything they wanted to do. So here come the Redskins. The Bulldogs uh, had it over and back as it went into the backcourt. So Wapakoneta will take over here. They'll swing it from left to right. Back to the right side, trying to push the ball down low. This is Zach Niekamp up top, and he is guarded by the sophomore we talked about, Zori Island. They'll try to dribble drive to the foul line, and Island is really d him up, pushing him off the foul line. They'll go to the right side. 6.59 to go here in the first quarter. Still scoreless from Wapakoneta High School. Danny Holbrook, Darren Gilbert bringing you high school basketball here on WOSN. They're going to be patient, Darren. We know that. They, they, they love the half-court set. Oh, sets. they will take – they're taking a minute, minute and a half off. They, they don't care. They're going to – Milk it and get a good shot. There's a three ball on the left side that rims in and out. That was number 30 for the Redskins. That was Deacon Redder. The 6'7 senior steps out there and pops one, but he misses it. Here comes the Bulldogs as they'll go try to go baseline, kick it back out. This is Torrey Thomas with the ball. He kicks it back to Island. You might remember Torrey Thomas from football, Darren. He was a heck of a line in both ways from the offensive and defensive lines. So Thomas out top, and he's guarded by Jackson Quarter, which is a really good matchup. Nice little move to the middle as he throws the ball away, and it's corralled by the Redskins. Yeah, Coach Tabor didn't like that turnover. It got too deep, Zori did, and had nowhere to go with it. You cannot throw a jump pass against a team like Wapaw. Quarter pushing inside to Redder, and Redder, the 6'7 Redder. senior, great position, Redder. knocks it in, and he gives the Redskins the 2-0 lead on the Layfeld Industrial Welding scoreboard. Yeah, Redder is starting to give him some solid minutes. He wouldn't shoot that three, and like you said, he pulled the trigger. Maybe Coach is starting to let him shoot that from the perimeter a little bit more now. Here come the Bulldogs down 2 to nothing. Three ball on the way, off the mark. Rebound comes down to Redder. He gets tied up by Thomas. The ball is going to go back to Wapakoneta. Yeah, I think we got a foul here. Oh, they got a foul. Grab. Excuse me. Yeah, I'm trying to see who it is. Two, Position of our table, they've got us kind of on the baseline here. We had a little trouble seeing that, but. Uh, hey, right. as long as we're not up there in the pros, <laughs> right. just, I'm perfectly content being couple right old, here. That's right. A couple of old guys like us down on the floor. I'm good with that. So this is Zach Niekamp. He is the leading scorer for the Wapakoneta Redskins. He comes in at almost 13 a game. As he's got the ball out top, going against Island. He'll go right side, takes it up, and his ball stripped away, and it goes back to the Redskins. Yeah, nice deflection there, trying to see who that was. I think that was Cobalt. I know the night we played, Wash played instead of Cobalt. Cobalt was dinged up from a previous injury, so good to see him back out there playing. Three ball on the way, off the mark. The three was up by Nekamp. They'll bring it back down the floor. This is Thomas 
He goes into it. Yeah, they're going to call that every time, Gilly. Every uh, I'll time. I'll tell you what, that's a great position by Kneecamp right there. The junior stepped in, and I know that had to hurt because Thomas is a big, thick kid. That's two quick ones. That's one of those 50-50 calls, but I think that, like you said, that's a no-doubter right there. Nice piece of officiating, excuse me. Seth Sharp enters the game for the Bulldogs. The junior guard averages seven points a game. There's a jumper from the right side, off the mark. Rebound comes down to Island. And uh, WOSN's own Scott Nurse, one of the officials tonight, he calls a foul out there on the floor. Got a clear out on the rebound. Scott Bryce over Engel, I believe. Over. Sorry, partner. Oh, that's all right. Scott came over and talked to us before the game. And always good to see one of our colleagues out there. He does a good job on the basketball court. This is Redder with the ball. They'll swing it back around. Three ball on the way. And they're going to say an illegal screen yeah. on number 14. That's Jackson Quarter. Well, and here's the call. Rule states you got to keep your arms in. It's only shoulder width apart. And when you bow the elbows out, that's not considered shoulder width, and they got him for a moving screen. Entering the game now, number two, Logan Crow, the 6'2 junior, or senior, excuse me, and number 10, Caleb Moyer, the 6'1 freshman. You'll remember him from the gridiron as the quarterback for the team. Fantastic athlete, and now he's in the game for the Redskins. A little weave action here by the Bulldogs. This is Island. Goes behind his back. Ball gets lost. Picked up by the Skins. That's number 20, Cash Shadle. And he'll get the ball over to Zach Niekamp. As I said before, Niekamp is the leading scorer. That's Moyer with the ball out there, the freshman. Matt Tabler imploring his troops to D it up. And we've got a charge call on that play. Couldn't see it from my vantage point, partner, but they're going to say he went right into it. I think that's Zach Niekamp. I think he hit that corn, I believe. Entering the game now for the Bulldogs, number three, Camden Howard, and number four, that's your guy, Amari Wash, the freshman who's got a really bright future ahead He's got of him. a big motor. He was fantastic. He did that yeah. night. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, he was fantastic on the football field, and like you said, you've seen him play. This is my first opportunity to see him play. How tough is it, Darren, to be a freshman and play in a WBL game in the late January when, you know, everything's on the line? Well, you're no longer a freshman, you know, <laughs> when you right. get into the month of January. There's a turnaround by number 13, Jackson Cobalt. They get the rebound, get the loose ball. Yeah, I think the, I think they got quarter there. He brought the ball down off the rebound and got it, his pocket picked and then grabbed. Well, and, and the significance of that, yeah. the arm. The significance of that, Gillies, that's the second foul on quarter. So quarter's going to have to go to the bench. Jackson quarter, the 6'5 senior, averages 11 points a game. A big blow right now for the Redskins. Bulldogs will get the ball inbounds. This is Camden Howard with the ball. Goes baseline, a little reverse layup. Misses the ball. Rebound comes down to Logan Crow, and he'll get it out to Moyer, who'll bring it down the floor. Right idea on the reverse layup, shielding his body from the defender to get the ball between him and the hoop and just couldn't finish. Low scoring so far in this quarter there. Redskins lead two to nothing on the Layfield Industrial Welding scoreboard. Well, and who's that benefit right now? Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. the home team, because of the style that they play, and I know Coach Tabler, he's asking the kids to get on the floor and get those 50-50 loose balls. Our scoreboard is presented by Layfield Industrial and Welding Supplies with locations in Coldwater and Greenville. Layfield Industrial is our scoreboard sponsor. Almost throw the ball away, and Moyer out top, and he's being guarded by Walsh. Two freshmen out there on the floor, Darren, and they've seen each other on the football field and now on the hardwood. Nice little move there by number five, Nate Metzger. Three ball on the way, off the mark. That was number 20 for the Skins, Cash Shadle. Our three-point sponsor tonight is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Yeah, Shadle can really shoot it, especially from deep. 30 is 67 for 45 percent. They've had good looks. They just can't get it in the going. And I was wrong there. Lee's Famous Recipe is our free throw sponsor. Our three-point sponsor is Web Insurance Agency. My mistake, Web Insurance Agency is serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in Lima and Bluffton. There's another three ball on the way, off the mark. That was number three for the Skins, Zach Niekamp. Rebound comes down. Wapakoneta gets another opportunity. They'll swing it to the corner. Three ball on the way, off the mark. Rebound comes down to the dogs. They'll bring it down the floor. This is Island with the ball out top. 
Yeah, if you're Elida, you cannot be giving up second and third opportunities to team like Wapak. Great offensive rebound there by Nate Metzger. Not only once, but twice. Wapak, or excuse me, Elida still scoreless on the evening. This is Island with the ball. Swing it around to the right side. Camden Howard guarded by Moyer on the wing. 157 to go. Redskins lead two to nothing on the Layfeld scoreboard. They'll swing it over to the right side. They might have taken their time with their offensive sets. Three ball from the top. Off the mark. Ball's going to go out of bounds and go back to Wapakoneta. That was number 11 for Elida. Tanner Roberts, the junior. He misses the three on there. Entering the game now, number 22 for the Bulldogs, Bryce Engel, back in the game. Amari Walsh will take a seat. As will Tori Thomas. So this is Kneecamp out top. Kneecamp, the six-foot guard, averaging 13 a game. A nice back cut there. And there's going to be foul on the shot attempt. They'll go to the line to shoot two. Yeah, the old Van Wert back door play that <laughs> Coach Knopf ran over there back in the early, late 80s and early 90s. And everybody has got it in their repertoire and excellent execution right there. Now he's going to get two free throws as a result. Nate Metzger will go to the line. He'll shoot a Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw. The first one's good. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in a lime all Wapak and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Home style happens here. Used it all but got the friendly bounce. Here in the home gymnasium, 50% free throw shooter. Redskins lead three to nothing with 125 to go. Second one's good. Now they've got a four point lead. Nate Metzger's got two on the afternoon. It's amazing how easy that second free throw is after <laughs> he knocked the first one in. First one's the hard one, absolutely, partner. Elida swings the ball around. They'll go to the corner side. Look to push the ball down low. Everything's going around the perimeter right now, Darren. Wapping is doing a really good job of keeping them out of the paint. Well, the dribble drive action they're struggling with, but that's good that they're going side to side because that will open something up. Three ball from the left side's up. It's off the mark. Rebound comes down to Wapakoneta. That was number 11, Tanner Roberts with the miss three. Ball comes down to Zach Meekamp. He'll bring it down the floor, guarded by Zori Island. Yep, Redder going after it, the six foot six big fella. Another rebound. They'll go Steve. back into Redder in the middle. He takes it up strong. Almost has his own rebound. Comes down to the dogs. They'll bring it down the right side of the floor with 35 seconds to go. Four to nothing still on the Layfield Industrial Welding scoreboard. Wapakoneta leads. Danny Hobart, Darren Gilbert from Wapakoneta High School. Bulldogs trying to get anything easy, and Wapakoneta are stifling defense so far. We're down to 20 seconds in the first quarter. This is Zori Island with the ball up top. The sophomore guard averages 11.7 a game. Guarded out top by Zach Meekamp. And I wouldn't be surprised if they don't do a little clear out action here, Darren. Yeah, you know, Wapak's going to get a little pack line. They're going to try to take it out of Zori's hands. Island tries to go up, and the ball goes out of bounds. It's going to go back to back to a lot, of, a lot of contact there, but there was no foul on the play. Well, I think part of that is, is Redder is vertical. Rule states if you're vertical, you can jump straight up. And in the official's eyes, that appeared to be that. So Zori Island's going to trigger the ball in. Gets it into the corner, three ball from the left side, and it's off the mark. So after one quarter from Wapakoneta High School, the Wapakoneta Redskins lead the Elida Bulldogs four to nothing. You're watching high school basketball on WSN. Our premier sponsors tonight are Dr. John Stocker, DDS. Providing dental care for high school sports fans. Dr. John Stocker, also Cook and Son Plumbing and Heating. Wapakoneta's premier sponsor is Cook and Son Plumbing and Heating, specializing in old time service since 1978. Find us on Facebook or call 419-738-8956. So, partner, not a lot, a lot of offensive output from the Elida Bulldogs. Is it more credit to Wapakoneta's defense, or is Elida not getting a lot of good looks? I think it's a combination of both. You know, Walpog is getting good looks, Elida's getting good looks, but both teams are Ding it up, and you know, you pick up the paper tomorrow morning, you see four to nothing. Your first instinct is it was a boring, right, right. A boring game. It was for anything the first but, quarter. yeah, right. And but it hasn't been, it's been up and down for Elida. And Walpock has defended it, and you know, Walpock's tried to score, and Elida's defended it also. 
go to the middle. Nice little move inside by number 22 for the Bulldogs. That was Bryce Ingles. He had a nice two-foot jumper. He just missed off the rim. Yeah, and again, the defense rotated for Walpuck, and I'm sure probably more times than not, knee camp right there, just, just the presence up there may have caused Engel to take his eye off the rim. Metzger gets the ball over to Moyer. He'll get the ball back. They look to push the ball down to Redder inside. May have got, got away Left with one. Left-hand shot, huh? but Redder comes down with the rebound, and they're going to say there's a foul pushing Redder out of bounds, and it looks like they're going to get number four for the Bulldogs. That's Amari Wash on the foul. Actually, no. I think he's coach or they're Mr. Just saying he pushed him out. Yeah. Mr. Nurse said it went off of uh, Wash's leg. Got it. Got it. I know Wash was kind of stunned by that call. It looked like he was arguing the, a foul call, but you're correct. It did go off his leg. There's a steal from Island. He'll go up the left side, take it up, and he knocks it in. And that's what he does best. Four to he, two. He, he takes his defense and makes it his offense. He wants to get the team going and get that motor going. That's four to two on the Lafo Industrial scoreboard. And we got a foul out top. They're going to get Zori Island on the call. That might have been one of those, hey, you know what? I'm here. Now he's just going to have to settle down and, and play with his feet, not his hands so much. That's one foul on Zori Island. Team foul number five for Elida. They'll push the ball down to Metzger. Metzger guarded by Walsh in the post. Metzger, a little turnaround from the right side, goes off the iron. They're going to get, looks like they're going to get Redder on the foul, the 6 7 post player. Yeah, that That's one he first. tried to go through somebody instead of around. Coach Sadler's son coming in. Ryan Sadler, 6'4", junior. Number 23, Ryan Sadler, as Darren said, the 6'4", junior enters the game. Island dribble drives to the middle. Shot from the left side, goes off the iron. Rebound comes down to Moyer. He'll kick it out to Zach Niekamp. He can't guard it out top by Island. This is Metzger with the ball. Over to Shadle. Shadle kicks it around to the right side to Moyer. Very deliberate offense by the Redskins. They're looking to push the ball down to the post. This is Sadler with the ball. Tries to go to the middle. Gets it back to Metzger. Metzger thought about taking it up. Now he'll kick it back out. Kick it back out to Shadle. And we got a timeout on the floor. So with 5.39 to go, the Redskins continue to lead 4-2. to two. We'll take a timeout here in the booth. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Tonight's three-point sponsor is Webb Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in Lima and Bluffton. So 5.39 to go, Darren. Redskins lead 4-2. to two. And like we said, we might, you know, might look in the morning and think, boy, that was boring, but it's a defensive game right now. It is. Both teams are locking one, under, one another down, making them each team to play to their weakness. And that's why we're sitting 4-2. to two. Metzger with the ball. He's guarded out top by Seth Sharp. Let's try to go baseline. Kicks it on the other side of the baseline. Moyer corrals the ball. Tries to go back inside. The ball gets deflected back to Moyer. Yeah, Seth Sharp with active hands there getting the deflection. This is Neekamp. They'll go to the top of the key. Patient offense by the Redskins. They continue to swing it around the arc. Elida continues that man-to-man -man defense. Nice cut. There goes cut. a nice cut by Caleb Moyer. Boy, the freshman is quick to go, and there's a nice dribble drive by the Bulldogs. Ball goes off the back iron, comes down to the skins, and there'll be a foul on number one, Seth Sharp. Didn't take him long to get it from the other end of the floor, huh? Yeah. A really, really nice cut there by Moyer, Caleb Moyer, the 6'1 freshman. And that's just court awareness, Darren. He knew where to go. Well, Coach Sadler talked to us before the game, and that's one of the things. He's playing two quarters of JVs, trying to get him some experience because they know down the road his athleticism is only going to make them better. 
And he was a fantastic quarterback for a really good football team from Wampakoneta. 434 to go. Skins lead 6-2. Three ball from the top of the key, and it's good. Zach Nekamp knocks in a Lee's famous recipe, or excuse me, a web insurance three-point goal. That's number 30 for the young man, 31% from behind the arc. And now it's 9-2 on the Layfield Industrial Welding scoreboard. There's a dribble drive to the middle, and there's going to be a foul, and that's going to go against Camden, How or excuse me, that's going to go against Zach Nekamp. Nice strong dribble drive there by Etzcorn. Taking the ball to the rim, trying to create something. And Darren, with a 9-2 lead right now with 4.09 to go until half, it's only seven points, but with the limited options you're getting in the offensive set, seven points is a big lead. Absolutely. Yeah, you got to feel a little more relaxed if you're in the, the white and red right now. Etzcorn goes to the line. Uh, Lee's famous recipe free throw. He misses that one. You know, this kid's real quiet, Danny, about scoring. You know, I know they played a you know very competitive game earlier this year against Kenton, and he carried him in the fourth quarter and hit some big shots to get that victory, you know, there at uh, the field house. So Ed Scorn lets the second fly, and it's good. Uh, free throws tonight are sponsored by Lee's famous recipe chicken. Oh, your catering needs. Leeds Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. With 4.09 to go, the Bulldogs cut it to 9-3 to on Edscorn's free throw. And now they're in a full man-to-man -man press here, trying to get Wapkin to speed it up a little bit. This is Nate Metzger. He's guarded out top by Tanner Roberts. They'll swing the ball around the arc. Looking to push the ball down low. A little baseline dribble. They'll kick it back out. Ball comes back out to Metzger. Tried to go down low. Camden Howard got his hands on it. Was really active. They'll kick it back out. This is Metzger again. Ryan Sadler getting good post position, but every time he gets the ball down low, they're just all over him. So they'll continue to run it around the arc. 3.30 to go until halftime. Redskins lead 9-3. Thought about taking the three. That was Sadler out top. This is Metzger, dribble drive on the baseline. Kicks it back out, three ball from the right side. Off the mark, rebound comes down to Logan Crow. Takes it back up, another rebound by Crow. They'll kick it back out, swing it back around. Skins with three possessions now. Offensive rebound, Darren, it's a killer when you're on the oh, defensive side. Oh, those second and third possessions, yeah, they can be a backbreaker. Moyer in the corner, kicks it back out to Sadler. Sadler goes back to Metzger. Around the iron to Crow. This is Sadler, 2.48 to go. Yeah, Metzger's not a big stat stuff for Ben. He plays hard and he's fundamentally sound around the rim. Well, and, and you know, Trey, but, Tre Trey Ecker, he's going to demand that from his kids. Oh, nice pass and cut. Tough break right there. Absolutely. Metzger with a nice dump down to. Moyer. Well, fouls on Cash Shadel, 6'1 junior. But that, that's what again. they do the best, Danny. They want to lull you to sleep. They want to take that minute, their minute and a half, and as soon as you turn your back to the ball, they're going to back cut you. So here come the dogs down 9 to 3 with 2.28 to go until halftime. And this is Zori Island with the ball. He's guarded by number 10, Caleb Moyer, out top. A sophomore and a freshman out there, and now they're double teaming on the wing, and they're going to get number 23, and that's Ryan Sadler on the foul. I think they got a body foul there, a little contact. Entering the game now for Elida, number 22, Bryce Engel comes back in the game, and yeah, they'll take Tanner Roberts. He'll take a seat, get a breather. Yeah, somebody that quick, you got to take a little bit more of a steep angle if you're going to try to trap that because they're just too, too quick at the guard position to go right at them. Redditor comes back in the game, the 6'7 post player, a big time presence in there for the Skins. Zori Island with the first free throw. He knocks it down. Makes it 9-4 on the Layfield Industrial scoreboard. 75% at the charity stripe as a team 
just under 68 at 67.6. And he knocks the second one in, so Island makes two. He's got four on the afternoon to lead the Bulldogs in scoring, 9-5 on the Layfield scoreboard. Just keep hanging around, don't they? They sure do, they sure do. And they understand what they have to do with this uh, Wapakoneta. And they're going to say, and they are absolutely right, Nate Metzger led with his arm, and he got Island in the chest, pushed him back, and that's the right call. If you extend the forearm, which they did, and if you're going to do it, you got to be discreet. And I think right there, that one was just a little bit too... A little bit too much, right? Yeah, too much <laughs> in, the, in the officials' eyes. So here's an opportunity for the Bulldogs to get within one possession. They're down four. This is Etzcorn with the dribble drive to the middle. Strong drive and by Etzcorn. that's Edscorn. what he does best. My goodness, he looked good on that drive. And he makes it 9-7 on the Layfeld Industrial Welding scoreboard. He does the dirty work for them at the offensive end. If he doesn't get it on the perimeter, he's going to the basket with it. This is Moyer almost throws it away. At number 13 for the Bulldogs, that is Jackson Cobalt. Nearly got a steal. And they're going to say he's on the foul. Yeah, Coach Tabler loves the effort, but he's also being very verbal and vocal with him, not the foul, just to play solid fundamentals. So going to the line for Wapakoneta is Nate Metzger, as he'll go to the line for a Lee's Famous Recipe free throw. Lee's Famous Recipe for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. So he knocks the first one in to give the Skins the 10-7 lead. Second one is on the way, and it is good. So Young Nate, man's hit three out of four for him. He has, Nate Metzger. has got four on the evening. And the Skins continue to lead 11-7 on the Layfield Industrial Scoreboard. 1.32 to go here from Wapakoneta High School. This is Island with the dribble drive, guarded out top by Moyer, tries to go middle. He's thwarted on the defense man. This is Cobalt. Cobalt tries to go baseline. He'll kick it back out. Three on the way by Etzcorn, and it's good. David Etzcorn, he's got their last five, Darren, and he's starting to heat up, and it's 11 to 10 on the Layfeld scoreboard. Yeah, he wants the ball in his hands. Another Web Insurance Agency three-pointer. Web Insurance Agency serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in Lima and Bluffton. So we're under a minute until halftime. Nice drive here. Wapakoneta the Redskins lead by one. This is Nate Metzger with the ball out top. He's guarded by Jackson Koval. They'll swing it around. Moyer goes back inside to the post. There's a steal. Here comes Island down the right side. He takes it up. Off the mark, rebound by Etzcorn, and he knocks it in. David Etzcorn oh, is on fire man. right now. He gives the Bulldogs the 12-11 lead. He's got eight. You don't think he's locked in, do you? <laughs> he's, he's having a heck of a half. It's 12-11. We're at 23 seconds. This is Metzger out top, guarded by Cobalt. It's a really good matchup because those are really good athletes out top there. This is Metzger with the ball. We're down to 10, Metzger dribble drive, kicks it back out, three ball from the right side, off the mark, rebound comes down, and look who's got his hands on it, David Etzcorn, it goes out of bounds, and it'll go back to the skins. Yeah, him and Moyer were battling after it, last touch by Etzcorn. Oh, he's gonna bring quarter in with the two, this is where he's gotta be smart, not get that cheap third one. Yeah, Jackson quarter enters the game, plus he brings in Zach Neekin. So yeah, quarter's gotta be smart right here. A little cross screen lob maybe. No inbounds the ball. This is Neekamp, three ball on the way, and it misses everything. Rebound comes down to Metzger, and that's how it'll end the first half. After one half, the Elida Bulldogs have a 12-11 lead. We'll come back for second half action right here on WOSN. Welcome back to Wapakoneta High School. We're at halftime. The Elida Bulldogs are up 12-11 on the Layfield Industrial Welding scoreboard. And Darren, we take a look at that first half, and Wapakoneta led the entire first half, and Elida under <laughs> David Edscorn just come out of nowhere. He gets eight of the Bulldogs' 12 points. Well, and we also talked when, you know, an intermission, it's been a positive for both teams. Sure. Even though it's 12-11, to 11, you know, Wapak, you know, gets a, a two quick fouls on quarter so he's got to sit and then turn around Thomas or vice versa Thomas gets two he's got a set and we're setting at a one-point game 
and you're, you're thinking, well, again, Lima News, you know, you get on him, you look at the score, like, oh, my gosh, that was probably a, no, no. a boring first half and the paint dry, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but, no, it's been one of these where both teams, you know, well-scouted, well-coached, and it's it's going to turn out to be a dandy. One stat I want to explain to you before we get started. Sure. Walpock has made 133 free throws, and their opponents have only attempted 142. Oh. That's an old Bobby Knight saying that if you can make as many free throws as your opponents attempted, that's part of the reason why. It's good basketball, absolutely. Yeah. Nice little turnaround jumper. The Wapak at number 14 for the Redskins. Jackson Quarter makes his presence known. He was on the bench in the first half a lot, Darren, but he's got a deuce there, and he gives the Redskins a 13-12 lead on the Layfield scoreboard. Well, he's one of those with such great length. Nice oh, oh, boy. And, and, and there's his third. Quarter gets his third foul with a minute, or with only a minute going in the third oh, quarter. He just gets the bucket. He goes down, and Island drives the middle of the floor, and he gets the foul. What, what do you do, Darren? Do you keep him in there? It looks like Coach Elker's going to go with him. I think it's he's going to make a switch defensively. You know, it's 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 too bad for the young man because he wants to do so well, and uh, he's been playing well to date. And that's just a, a right. smart play by Mr. Ireland to get to the rim and make contact and do what he does best, and that's make free throws. And Zori Island knocks in two of them. He's got six on the night for the Bulldogs. You know, you ask, what would I do? You got to let the kid play from this standpoint because if you don't, you know, does he does he mentally lose it for the rest of the game? You know, you want to keep sure, him involved. Sure. Wapakoneta down 14-13 on the Layfeld scoreboard. Taking their time on the offense. A nice dribble drive and a left-handed layup by number five, Nate Metzger. That was a strong move, Darren. And, and he's like Edscorn. He does the little things Absolutely. that people don't realize. Inside out, just the just the, the little things that make you so much better. This is Torrey Thomas with the ball. Torrey was on the bench a lot of the first half for the Bulldogs as he's got two fouls. So they're glad to have him back in this half. A little turnaround, nice little half hook, and it rolls in. Rice Engle knocks it in. He gives the Bulldogs the 16-15 lead on the Layfield Industrial Scoreboard. A little jump hook action right there by the senior. Darren, we're seeing a lot more offense right now than we've seen the entire first half. Both teams putting the ball in the rim. Three ball from the top of the key, and it's good. Number three for the Redskins, Zach Meekamp, knocks in the Web Insurance three-point goal. This is that scoring, trying to push the ball down to Torrey Thomas. They'll swing it around to Island. Island guarded out top. He goes to the middle, little turnaround. Ball comes down to Island, gets his own rebound and puts it back up. Zori Island's got eight on the night. He's got the last four for the Bulldogs. Yeah, if you're Walpaw, and you let Mr. Ireland or those guards in the paint area, bad things happen because everybody's one pass away. This is Quarter with the ball. It goes off of Quarter. He was guarded tightly by number 13, Jackson Kovalt, and it's going to go back to the Bulldogs. It's 18-18 on the Layfeld Industrial Scoreboard. Danny Holbrook, Darren Gilbert from Wapakoneta High School on a cold, snowy night, but it is warm and competitive in this gym. Toasty. How's Toasty. That? There you go. Nice, nice choice of words. Zori Island out top. This is Etzcorn from the top of the key, and he knocks it down. David Etzcorn is on fire, and he brought that fire from the first half. He's got 10, or excuse me, he's got 11 on the night to lead the Bulldogs, and they lead 21-18 on the Layfeld scoreboard. Nice set there by Elida. Little double down screen at the top there for Etzcorn. This is quarter up top. He'll swing it over to Redder. Redder, the 6 7 post player, was a big difference maker in the first half, defensively and offensively. Zach Neekamp guarded tightly up top by Zori Island. Try to push it down to Redder. Bulldogs lead 21 18 on the late field scoreboard. Tough break right there. They missed. This is Neekamp tries to go to the middle. Metzger on a slip screen. Metzger kicks it back out. 
Goes into Redder, nice delivery, and Redder knocks in the deuce, and it makes it 21-20 on the Layfield scoreboard. Redder got great position, and it was a great entry pass there. Oh, it was. Guess who? Metzger. <laughs> Does Metzger, the little things. Metzger on Etzcorn. Nice matchup. That's a really nice matchup. This is Zori Island on the right side of the floor. Dribble drives to the middle. A little scoop shot, but he knocks it in. Zori Island with the acrobatic shot, and he gives the Bulldogs the 23-20 lead, and Zori Island is on fire right now, Darren. He's got well, 10 of the 23. Where, and where did he get him at? You know what I'm saying? Where oh, is absolutely. he starting to get it? He's starting to get it off dribble drive penetration in the lane. Bulldogs lead 23-20, 3.52 to go. This is Nate Metzger up top, guarded by Tori Thomas. Redder swings it around, looking to get the ball down to Metzger. Metzger with the dribble drive of the fouling, kicks it back out, three ball from the left side, off the mark, rebound comes down to Atscorn, he'll lead the break, he's down the middle, gives it over to Island. Island takes it up and he knocks it in. Zori Island's got 12 on the night to lead the Bulldogs, and they up the lead to 25-20 on the Layfeld scoreboard. Yeah, the tempo is starting to turn a little bit, now it's going to a 94-foot game. What, Darren, what did you and I talk about at halftime? I said, if I was Coach Tabler, I'd get those athletes out and get them running the floor. That's exactly what they're doing. Yeah, they've got to get the tempo in their favor. Three ball from the right side, and it's good. But then again, when you have somebody <laughs> like that that can pull up and just let one rip there. Zach Meekamp knocks down a web insurance three-pointer, and down come the Bulldogs. And there'll be a timeout on the floor with 2.53 to go. The Bulldogs lead 27-23. We'll be right back after these messages. Check out the WSN YouTube page for highlights of tonight's Stolly Insurance Stolly Hustle Award. Gilly and I will pick a winner, and uh, we've got quite a few we can pick from tonight, Darren. But uh, right now, the tempo, and you said it best, the tempo is in Elida's favor, and they're really pushing it. Well, and you know, Coach Tabler was honest with us. You got to rebound the basketball at both ends. You got to play fast. You got to play at 94 feet. And you can see that momentum has changed in, in favor of the visitors right now. But, you know, when you got the likes of Mr. Kneecamp, who's hit three threes tonight, that's a positive for Walpock. So maybe the rims are loosening up. The lids are coming off at both ends for these teams. You know, we saw earlier in this quarter, Darren, the entry pass into a redder, and it was a really nice pass. And I don't think these guards get enough credit for getting the ball down to the post like they do. Oh, the high post said, you know, Redder's yeah, come a long ways. He sure has. Because, yeah. you know, I watched him at Van Wert, and he was very reluctant when he got the ball on the perimeter and, you know, was more so just a passer. But he's doing a really good job tonight. Got some points for him, got some rebounds for him. Solid job by that big man. Absolutely, and he's gonna take a seat, he'll get a breather, and they bring back in the freshman, Caleb Moyer, and he's getting a lot more playing time right now. Caleb Moyer with his, his athleticism and his ability to get to the ball. This is Moyer in the corner, guarded by number 22, Bryce Engel. They'll swing it back up top to Nate Metzger. Metzger gets it over to Korta. Korta guarded by Koval. Korta goes to the middle, kicks it to the outside. This is Moyer down in the corner, guarded by Engel. Swing it back out, Wapakoneta delivered offense. There's a three ball from the left side, and it doesn't hit anything. Rebound comes down to Wapakoneta, ball goes up, and <laughs> great job by, there's that guy again. It was in. Nate Metzger almost knocks it in. He's sure gonna go did. to the line for two. Now give a lot of credit there to Logan Crow. You know, six foot two senior, got the offensive rebound. Little dump off right there to his partner. Mr. Metzger, and he almost, like you said, to get that old-fashioned and one. First one on the way, and it's good. This is a Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapakoneta, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. So Metzger knocks in the first one. It makes it 27-24 on the Layfeld Industrial Scoreboard. Boy, Second doesn't look like one. a 50% free throw shooter, does no, he? He looks comfortable, doesn't he, Gilly? Five of six, the charity strike. Makes it a 27-25 game with two minutes to go. Wapakoneta had a little pressure on top as they'll double team the ball. They'll swing it back around. This is Seth Sharp, gets it into Kovalt. Kovalt swings it back out to Amari Walsh, the freshman. 
This is Cobalt out top, taking their time, 1.43 to go. They'll go to the middle of the floor. Shot comes up by Seth Sharp. Off the back iron, rebound comes down, and it's rebounded by number 14, Jackson Quarter. Yeah, they went to a little 1-3-1 with Quarter at the top and sort of confused Elida. Nice dribble dive on the right side. Ball goes up, it goes out of bounds, we go back to Wapakoneta. So there's a nice drive there by Zach Niekamp. And the ball goes out of bounds, but it comes back to the skins. Yeah, had the right idea, just got a little bit too deep, took his angle away, dribble drive at the baseline. That was off a wash. So a huge game right now for Wapakoneta, Darren. They're three and two in the league. That was, If they get a win here, that pushes them to four and two, and they're still right in the thick of it. Yeah, because, you know, talking to Coach Sadler before the game, his their best player at the guard spot tore an ACL. Yeah, that's and right, that's right. Mr. Bauer, and he's done for the year, so. They had to realign everything. Three ball almost banked in as Jackson quartered, attempted the three from the left side of the floor. It comes down to Zori Island with 59 seconds to go. Yeah, they're staying. Looks like they're going to like a 1-2-2 two, two matchup now with quarter with that long length at the top. Elida's got Camden Howard running in the middle, and Zori Island loses the ball. And there's Coach a turnover. Taylor didn't like that one. That's too much dribble penetration against the zone. You got to go side to side and get a post touch and use your bigs as much as possible. Here comes Wapakoneta, 30 seconds to go. 27-25 on the Lafayette Industrial scoreboard. This is Metzger up top. Swings it around to Neekamp. Neekamp being tied up right now by Tanner Roberts. Here's a dribble drive to the left side. Back to quarter. Quarter swings it around to Nate Metzger. We're down to 10 seconds. 27-25 on the late field scoreboard. This is Metzger up top. Guarded by Roberts. Get it down to quarter. And quarter loses the ball out of bounds. He loses it out of bounds. Slams it down on the ground. Got to be careful, young man. Yeah, that's more of a frustration sure, thing than sure. anything. You know, at least when he slammed it, it bounced right back up into his hands. He's trying, he's just pushing himself a little bit, trying to do a little bit too much. And Scott Nurse is talking to Jackson Quarter as he takes a seat. And the ball's gonna be triggered in by Tanner Roberts. Tanner Roberts gets it into Island. Island brings it up the floor, lets it fly from half court, and it's off the mark. So after three quarters of play for Wapakoneta High School, the Atlanta Bulldogs lead 27 to 25. We'll be back for fourth quarter action right here on WOS. Our premier sponsor tonight is John Stocker, providing dental care for high school sports fans. Dr. John Stocker, Cook and Son Plumbing and Heating. Wapak Nettles premier sponsor is Cook and Son Plumbing and Heating, specializing in old time service since 1978. Find us on Facebook or call 419-738-8956. So one quarter to go, partner, and the Bulldogs keep that slim margin at 27-25. I really liked both teams getting to the rim a little more, and, and effectively their offense has kind of came alive. Both teams, are, you know, are making adjustments at the defensive end of the floor. You know, Wapak showing a lot more zone, trying to stop the dribble penetration, and it's been effective. They did the same thing at Van Wert, and it caused some issues and problems and slowed down Van Wert's tempo. This is Jackson Cobalt, three-pointer off the mark, rebound comes down. The rebound came down to Camden Howard, and he gets his shot blocked. He was right underneath the basket, and they're gonna say that Wapakoneta stepped out of bounds. Yeah, that's the one where he's gotta go get it and snap it and go right up through his face and score there. So Island will inbounds it. He'll get the ball back. This is Sori Island at a great third quarter. He's got 14 on the night to lead the dogs. He's gonna pull it out a little bit. He's guarded by Zach Neekamp. Gonna give himself a little bit of space as they've got three or two on both sides. This is Etzcorn. Etzcorn dribble drive. They'll kick it back out. Three ball on the way from the right side. Off the mark. And that was number three, Camden Howard, as he misses the shot. And they're gonna call a foul. And I think they got... Uh... Shadle. So they got Shadle on the foul, and that is his second. They'll bring back Jackson Quarter and number five, Nate Metzger, two starters back into the game. And don't forget, Quarter's got those three fouls. Good minutes from Logan Crow and That's Ryan Sadler. 
This is Jackson Cobalt back to Escort. He thought about shooting. He dribbled drive in the middle. Goes inside. They're going to say there's a foul on number 20, Cash Shadle. And that'll be his third foul. So Shadle in a little bit of foul trouble. And the, and the fouls for the skins. You've got Quarter with three, and now Shadle with three. Well, it's coming at a good time because, you know, team foul wise, it doesn't hurt right now. Sure, sure. 7.03 to go here in the fourth quarter. Dogs lead 27 25. They'll get the ball out to number 22, Bryce Engel. He'll get it into Etzcorn. Etzcorn's guarded by Caleb Moyer out top. Jackson Cobalt with the ball. They go swinging around. Little wheel action to Thomas. Or excuse me, to. Oh, what a split. Sorry, Island. Oh, didn't get it. This is the little bunny, but he gets his own rebound. There's the hustle from Zori Island. He'll go to Ed Scorn in the corner. Back to Island. 6.36 to go. Dogs lead 27-25 on the Layfield scoreboard. Danny Holbrook, Darren Gilbert from Wapakoneta High School in this key WBL matchup. They'll swing it from left to right. This is Ed Scorn out top. They'll go back to Zori Island. They'll go back to Camden Howard. Camden Howard. This is Ed Scorn. Thought about the three. Goes to the middle. Camden Howard from the top of the line. He goes off the right side. The ball's corralled by Zori Island. Throws it in bounds. And it's picked up by number 14, Jackson Quarter. Nice move inside by Moyer, and he lays it in with the left hand. And it's all tied up at 27. Moyer. That was a nice play, Barber. Wow. You know, like you said, there's a kid who played two quarters of JBs, and look how much better he's getting. What a rim run from one end of the floor to the, to the other. Nice bounce pass, nice finish. Wapakin in the back in that zone again, Darren. And there's a kick out front. Coach Elkert said no, there wasn't no kick, said it just went off of his hip. And you know, the execution from Elida against this zone has been really, really good. They've got high quality looks. They just can't knock him down from the perimeter. You see Thomas is back in for Elida in the post. They've got Jackson Quarter on top of that zone. He's got a lot of length there. And there's a steal. Caleb Moyer steals the ball, throws it back to Quarter. Quarter corrals it, and he'll set it up for the skins. So a big steal from Caleb Moyer. And last two times down the floor, he's been the difference well, maker. Well, you're not going to see in the stat sheet. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. You're not going to see in the box score, but you're going to see two big deflections when Coach Elkert and the team watches the film. To see if they can get something out of it point-wise. Three ball from the right side, and it's good! You remember that in five-minute mark, the deflection and the plays that quarters made the last two possessions. Cash Shadow with another Web Insurance three-point goal, and he gives the Skins the 30-27 lead, a lead they haven't had since the second quarter. This is Zion, or this excuse me, Zori Island out top. This is where quarters got to be, you know, smart, and I'll get that fourth. And Coach Tabler's going to take a timeout. With 4.39 to go, the Wapakoneta Redskins have taken a 30-27 to 27 lead. We're watching high school basketball on WOSA. After the game, check out the WSN YouTube page for highlights of tonight's winner, our Stolly Insurance Stolly Hustle Award winner. And Gilly and I are going to pick one tonight. And uh, so far, we, we, don't, we can't pick anybody because it's such a tight game right, right. now. Yes. <laughs> So we'll see what happens here as the game goes on with 4.39 to go. The Redskins have taken a 30 to 27 lead on a three point shot that was made possible by the quarterback, Caleb Moyer. Well, and I think going to this zone, it's eliminated or contained the dribble penetration. Something Elida likes to do. They're getting good looks. They're just not knocking them in right now. Zoray Island is guarded by Zach Neekamp out top. They'll oh, swing they over. went to a little trap. Yes, they did, and they are trapping out top. And they're going to say the ball went out of bounds and is back to Wapakoneta. So you saw Seth Sharp get tied up out top in front of the coach's box, and the ball goes back to Wapakoneta. Yeah, they went to a little man action. Then that first pass, they went and trapped it, and Lighty couldn't hang on to it. Turnover. Here comes Quarter guarded out top by Amari Walsh. And Scorn is guarding Cash Shadle. 
This is Shadow from the three-point line. Off the mark. Rebound to Moyer. Moyer corrals the... And they're going to get a... What are they saying? Yeah, he hopped. They're going to say... On the say, rebound, he okay. travel. Okay. There's Caleb Moyer again, Darren. Goes there. for the ball. Absolutely. So he gets a rebound. He travels with the ball. The home crowd does not like that. But Elida brings the ball down with four minutes to go. Down 30-27 on the Lathub Industrial Scoreboard. This is Amari Walsh out top. Just swing it back around to Island. Island back to Edscorn. Edscorn from the left side. Three-pointer on the way. Off the mark. Rebound comes down. Goes out of bounds. And they're going to say it goes back to Wapakoneta. Yeah, I think that was off a wash. I think it was Again, too. you know, Coach Elkert decided to go back to the zone. Mixing and matching his defense. This is Kneecamp out top, guarded by Sori Island. It'll come back to Moyer. Moyer swings it back to Metzger. Metzger thought about going to the post for Moyer down low. They'll swing it back around. Moyer looking for quarter in the post. They'll take it back up top. And they'll reset the offense. 324 to go. Skins lead 30-27. Moyer from the top of the key. And it's good! Caleb Moyer knocks in a women's shirt score. Three-point goal. Through 27, Caleb Moyer's doing it all. You know, coming in, he had hit two, two for 10, but man, what a big one right there. Talk about somebody playing with a lot of confidence. He's got seven on the night, Darren. This is Sori Island from the top of the key. Off the mark, rebound comes down to Walsh. Walsh goes back up, and he's fouled, and he knocks it in. Amari Walsh, the freshman, with a big rebound, and he's gonna go to the line for an old-fashioned three. Mr. Wash wanted that one, didn't he? Yes, he did. Not only did he want the ball, he wanted that thing, that little orange, to go through the cylinder. So Amari Walsh will go to the line for a Lee's Famous Recipe chicken free throw. 60% from the charity strike, the young man. Trying to make it a one-possession game. He's got two on the night. And those are two really big points for that young man. Mm -hmm. He lets the free throw fly, and it is off the mark. Rebound comes down to Cash Shadle. He'll kick it out to Moyer. Oh, what and a pass. And a cutting Metzger, and he knocks it in. Nate Metzger cutting to the basket. Makes it 35-29 on the late felt scoreboard. Nice pass there by Kneekamp. A little give and go. Zori Allen goes to the middle, back to Amari Walsh. He goes inside, and it's blocked by Caleb Moyer. you got to be kidding me, Darren. That kid is everywhere. Metzger is guarded by Zori Allen. It goes out of bounds, but a nice defensive play. Darren, Caleb Moyer has turned this tide of this game everywhere, offensively and defensively. Yeah, he just brought energy not only to his teammates, but to the crowd also. This is Zach Meekamp, guarded by Zoran. There's a steal from Jackson Cobalt, and he, the ball goes away. And it looked like it went off of a redskin. They're going to say the ball goes back to Elida. I think that was the right call from well, my vantage point. It and, looked and, right. and even in this situation, both the other two officials were beyond half court. You know, distance-wise, I just don't know if they can make a change to that call. It's too far for me to sit here and judge whether sure. that was all, all, whoever it was off of, but. Zori Allen with the ball up top. Dogs down 35-29 to the Skins. Nice little spin move by Island. He misses off the mark. Rebound comes down. That was number one for the Dogs. Seth Sharp, he tries to take it up. He's going to go to the line. And those are huge right now because the clock has stopped with 1.58 to go. And they go to the line for two. Well, Coach Elker, you know, concern he has to have is allowing that dribble penetration by Elida's guards. They do so much damage when they get in there. Seth Sharp knocks in the first. 71%. My apologies there, partner. No, you're Sorry. fine. You're fine. Second one on the way. And it's good. Seth Sharp with the second one goes down. He's got two on the night. And it's 35-31 on the Lathe Up Industrial Scoreboard. So here's some pressure out top. And they're going to say Jackson Cobalt was hanging on top of uh, Jackson Quarter. I'll tell you, they've done a really good job. He light is shooting the basketball from the free throw line. Actually, both teams have. So they get it down to Metzger. Metzger comes down the right side. 
and Coach Elkert's going to take a timeout. That'll give us a chance to take a timeout with 1.52 to go. The Skins lead the Dogs 35-31 right here on WOSN. Welcome back to Wapakoneta High School, where with 152 to go, the Skins lead the Bulldogs 35-31. And we are far from over here, as both teams have played really great defense here in the second half, and they get after it. So Wapakoneta inbounds the ball. This is Metzger with the ball up top. He is guarded by Seth Sharp. He'll swing it over to Caleb Moyer. Boyer back to Metzger. Skins running clock right now. They're up four. Oh, nice cut by Metzger, and he knocks it in. Caleb Boyer with a great pass. He finds Metzger going to the rim, and he knocks it in to make it a 37-31 game. Elida comes back down. They missed the bunny shot. That was number 22, Bryce Engel, as Zori Island got him the ball down low, and he misses the bucket. Yeah, the only difference was he was unfortunate not to get the little power move inside to drop where we did down here at this end. And then Engel commits the foul. So Jackson Quarter will get the ball in as he's pressured. Brings it up to Caleb Moyer up the right side. Caleb Moyer guarded by Seth Sharp up top. This is quarter, 1-10 to go. Redskins lead 37-31. They'll double team the ball up top. That's scoring on quarter. Swing it around. This is Shadel. Under a minute to go, 37-31. Backdoor cut by quarter. He knocks it in, he's fouled. Jackson Porter, the 6'5 senior, and he's been waiting for that all night, Dan. Well, you know what he did really well? Is he took that thing to the basket and squared his shoulders up to the backboard. A lot of guys, a lot of times guys are just gonna go to the rim, leave their shoulders open for to get it blocked. Not that time. He got them shoulders square, got it on the glass in the old-fashioned and one. And quarter, and he knocks in the free throw. That's Ali's famous recipe, chicken free throw. And he gives the Skins the 40-31 lead. Here's Zori Island, tries to take it inside. Goes up top, and it goes off the rim. Rebound comes down to Metzger, and he'll be fouled by Zori Allen. So now it's kind of getting away from Elida as they're down nine on the Layfield Industrial scoreboard. Season 18 of the Sports Report continues Friday night. Join Patrick Kamler for a full hour of the most comprehensive basketball coverage around. All season long, Fridays at 10 on WTLW. And uh, David Etzcorn with the foul, and he looked like Nate Metzger got knocked down. Uh, I don't. I can't tell. I don't think it was intentional. It was just a, t a physical play there, Darren. Uh, but the crowd reacted, and they're saying it was intentional. They're calling an intentional foul on David Etzcorn. Well, I think the question is: Is there an attempt to go for the basketball? Coach Tabler is not happy about that call, and that will result. I think he's just asking for an explanation. Sure. So Nate Metzger will go to the line. Skins up 40 to 31. That's where you got to have cooler heads prevail at both ends of the floor. And good job by the officials stepping in between both these gentlemen. It's been a very, very well played, yes. aggressive. It's been a good officiated game, too. It's a Absolutely. good crew. It's a really good crew. Absolutely. Nate Metzger misses the first least famous recipe free throw. Second one on the way. And he misses that one and, also. And, uh, okay. He's five of six coming in. Nobody's at the charity stripe. <laughs> and he misses both and of he, Yeah. It's a curse. It's, it's the it, announcer it's, curse. It's, uh -huh. <laughs> no, not this time. Because I didn't, I didn't say anything before That's he right. pulled the trigger on That's those right. two. So Wapakoneta inbounds the ball with 38 seconds to go. They're up nine. They'll get it in the quarter. Quarter comes back to Metzger. Metzger comes back to Zach Niekamp. They'll go back to Caleb Moyer. They get the ball in. Caleb Moyer is fouled by Jackson Kobold out top. So Caleb Moyer, the outstanding freshman who did it all fall season on the 
Gridiron has done a terrific job here on the basketball court. Three and nine from the charity stripe. That's the first and fly, and he misses that one. That's going with the rebound. That's going brings it down. 28 seconds to go. Gets it into Walsh with the drive, and he knocks it in. And Coach Tabor's going to take a timeout. It'll be a 40-33 with 22 seconds to go. We'll take a timeout here in the booth. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Wabagana High School. 22 seconds to go. The Redskins lead 40 to 33. And they, that, that big zone they went to, Darren, was really the difference maker this half. Quarter at the top. You know, five minute mark, got his hand on two deflections, come down and Walpaw hits a three, and it's just, it, it's opened up that seven point lead. Get it into Shadow, and Shadow's fouled right away. So, Cash Shadow will come down. And He's got three on the night. Cash Shadle, the 6'1 junior, averages 7.4 a game. So 21 seconds to go. Redskins lead 40 to 33. First one on the way, and he knocks it in. Is this Redskins the 41-33 lead? Darren, this is going to move Wapakoneta to nine and eight on the season and four and two in the WBL. Very much in the middle of that or in the thick of that race. And you look at Elida, they're going to fall to six and nine on the season and one and five in the WBL. Four in a row and six out of their last seven. Two big free throws right there by Mr. Shadel. Mari Walsh with a three-point attempt as it goes off the mark. 14 seconds to go. 42-33. And taking nothing away from Elida. The game plan was excellent. You know, they didn't make some shots early, but they didn't hang their hats and her heads down, so to speak. That's going with a three-point try. He goes off the mark, comes down to Wapakoneta, and that's how it will end. After four quarters, the Wapakoneta Redskins prevail 42 to 33. When we come back, we'll have our Stolly Hustle Award winner. And we'll see if we can get Coach Elker for a little bit of a talk. Right here on WSN. Back here at Wapkin out of high school with our Stolly Hustle Award winner tonight, freshman Caleb Moyer. And Caleb, the energy you brought tonight was amazing. Is that a role that you relish? I mean, it was a job I had to do in football, and I'm just happy I could help the team win tonight. Yeah, a big three-pointer there in the second half when the team needed it the most, and you just stepped up there and knocked it down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, great <laughs> pass. It's always open, so I shot it, made it, and... Got the dub. You know, being a quarterback on the football team, you've got a leadership role. But kind of coming out here with the upperclassmen, you, you take a different role, or do you, you really like that leadership role? Um, I've had to be a leader my whole life, and I tried to adopt it, and I had a lot of help from the upperclassmen, and I thank the upperclassmen for helping me. Well, congratulations. you got a bright future ahead of you. I don't thank know you. if it's going to be football or basketball, because you're really good in both. Thank you. <laughs> congratulations, thank man. You. Back here at Wapakoneta High School with Coach Trey Elker. Coach, congratulations on a big time win. Thank you, appreciate it. Yeah, it was uh, hard fought. Uh, you know, a little bit of a struggle to put points on the board there in the first half, but uh, hit enough shots in the second half and found a way to pull one out. Yeah, Coach, it looked like when you went to the second half and you went to that big zone with quarter up top, it really paid dividends. Yeah, it did. You know, that's not something that we utilize a ton. Uh, you know, we're primarily a man-to-man -man team, but it's something we've had in our back pocket the last couple years that you never know when you might need to pull it out. And, you know, I thought we were great in man in the first half. We only gave up 12 points, but they came out in the second half and adjust, and they were getting into the lane whenever they wanted. Um, you know, credit to Island and a couple of their guards. So we felt we had to do something. And, you know, tonight the 1 2 2 was the adjustment that we made, and fortunately it worked out for us. So you go to 4 and 2 in the league, you're still in the thick of this thing. And talk a little bit about what this young man, Caleb Moyer, means to this team. He's a freshman coach, and the energy, he, he was a Stolly Hustle Award winner for a reason tonight. He was 
was really the difference maker. Yeah, he made some big plays there in the second half. You know, he, he got thrown into the fire a little bit early as a freshman, especially with a short start uh, off of football and things like that. And, you know, it's taken him a little while to get his basketball legs and get a little bit of a feel. Um, but all of a sudden, the last couple of weeks, things have started to click a little bit. And uh, you could see that tonight because he made some big time plays yeah, for Yeah, well, us. you got Bath next weekend. Are you already focused on them? What do you know about the Wildcats? Uh, we're, we're, you know, we're taking a week by week at a time. So, you know, we were focused on sure. Elida this week, but we'll, we'll transition over to the bat tomorrow. Um, you know, they're talented and they're young, but they're talented and they got a lot of quick guards. Um, the Craddock brothers gave us a lot of problems here last year. Um, so, you know, things start with them. But, uh, you know, it, what I, we told our guys in the locker room afterwards is there's not going to be an easy one in the WBL. Sure. They're, you know, teams are either talented, whether they're young or, or, or not. There, there's enough skill in the league on any given night. You better come ready to play. So Coach Elker, Elker excuse me, and the Wapkanata Redskins get a big WBL victory right here on WSN.